<laughs> this is going to be fun because we're just, no real plan. I mean, we kind of have a plan, but we're just kind of shooting from the hip. Whatever, whatever that means. Just take it easy, champ. Today is kind of like a fan showdown. It's a fan showdown special. We haven't had one of those in a long time. And I've been wanting to print this solution for quite a bit, but yeah, well, I, I've harped on enough. We now have the Q IDI. Somebody said it was pronounced Chi Chi? How does. I don't know how that works. But anyway, uh, we have that printer. We can print in PVA support material. So now we can do this print that has uh, made the rounds on Reddit. It's ended up in the fan showdown email. Uh, yet there is a fan showdown Reddit in case you didn't know. You can, you know, post your fan models there. And if it gets enough traction on the Reddit page, sometimes we can uh, do these specials. I just gotta go get it. So it's, it's over there. Right back. Thank you to Exter for sponsoring today's video. And you might be wondering who exactly is Exter? Well, Exter is the largest smart wallet brand in the world. And when my old wallet finally gave way, I knew it was time to upgrade to something smarter. And Exter was a perfect fit for what I needed. The wallet I chose was the Vachette Parliament. The reason I chose this wallet and probably one of the best features of this smart wallet is its quick access card mechanism. With just a push of a button, all the cards that you have stored in the wallet pop out and fan out so they're nice and easy to get to. In addition to that, the wallet also offers RFID protection so you can keep your cards and your identity safer and the leather is premium, sourced from LWG gold rated tanneries. Exter also offers other accessories for their wallet, one of them being a tracker, which I didn't get but uh, probably will give me my track record, but with just two hours of sunlight, it's able to give you three months of charge so no matter where in the world you lose your wallet, you'll always be able to find it. So if you're looking to upgrade your wallet to something smarter, check the link in the description below and thank you to Exter for sponsoring this video. So this is actually part of the Elegoo wash station. I have one of the, the new Mars 2 resin printers. I just haven't found a good project for it. But the cleaning station does a great job at removing the dissolvable support materials because you can put it all in this water and turn it on. It has a little agitator at the bottom. Works out great. Now, a lot of you guys, when you found out that we have this printer that prints insoluble support material, you're like, you should do, a, you should do like a, a time lapse of the support material kind of dissolving away. But anyway, we're going to take all these pieces out of here, clean up any material that's left on them, and I'll tell you what all of these parts make. It'd be easier if I just took this. There's a basket. I should probably just use the basket. What is happening? What are these things? So now that I got them uh, pretty much cleaned up, I don't, I don't see any more support material. I got them dry as much as possible. Let's talk about what all these what all these are and how it's supposed to work. So essentially, let's talk about all the pieces and put it together and then we'll talk, talk about how it's supposed to function because it's actually, if it works, it's it's pretty clever. We'll start with the easiest piece. This is obviously the fan, but it's it's different. It's not like a standard, well, this one, this one's not too standard, but like this one. It's not like a standard fan where you just have air going in one side out the other side. This is like, uh, I think you, I think you could call it like a compound fan. There's two fans in one. Through the center here, you have a fan that essentially is going to help, or essentially is going to try to pull air through the air cooler. And on the top, you have more of a blower style fan that you could say on the edge. And it's going to make more sense when we look at this next piece, which is the top cover. Now the top cover has two pipes coming off of it which are going to allow the blower type fan to move air, hopefully down them, while the inner fan can help pull air through the top. Now that air that's getting pushed down these pipes is gonna travel around these elbows, down these side pipes, and then into these outlet valves, I guess you could call them. And the idea here is that the internal fan or the inside fan is gonna pull air up through the air cooler while this exterior radial fan is going to blow air through these pipes down towards the bottom of the cooler and kind of create like a, a forced convection type type situation. It's pretty cool. I don't know if it'll work. Let's get it all put together and see how it see how it looks. So we're going to need to build this for at least before we glue it together we need to build it on the cooler just to make sure we're got everything oriented correctly. So dusty. Yeah. So obviously the fan is going to go on top like so. The biggest thing is trying to Trying to keep it from being so, so wobbly. Doesn't have any support up top. But anyway, there's where the fan's gonna go. Then we got the top cover, like that. And the elbows are gonna go on. Down pipe. Now, if that shape fits into that shape, it'll be a very satisfying. 
Oh, perfect. That's what she said. <laughs> so that's how that's going to go. Ooh, pretty tight over here. I don't know if you can see down the, down the edge there. Was there enough space left between the edge of the cooler and the graphics card? Oh, perfect. That's how it's going to go. So now we just need to glue it all together and take a look at it. See if it even works how it's supposed to. <laughs> it's so cool. Well, I mean, it, it did go together, so I guess we can go forward now. <laughs> This is the NHP1 cooling solution, and it was designed by Shelby. Now, Shelby said they didn't have any plan of sending, the, sending me this model, one, because they thought it might be a little you know, tricky to print, but after posting it to Reddit, they got a really good response on it and decided, you know what, why not? So they sent it over. Uh, they did make a revision to it to make it a little easier to print, and that's what we have today. But the idea here is this is a custom cooling solution specifically designed to cool the NHP1. And it looks like it's going to be pretty cool as long as it works. So this thing's running about as good as I can get it. I put it up on these helping hands and I kind of tweaked everything's position to try to get it as smooth as possible. And there's a little bit of contact in there, but for the most part, it kind of just sounds like an air raid siren, which is kind of weird. But before we try to cool the NHP one, I want to see if it has the flow pattern that Shelby tried to design. I want to put some smoke down here and see if it's drawn up through the fan disc. And I also want to put some up the top to see if it's drawn in through the gap and push down these cooling arms into the bottom and hopefully creating that convection type current. But anyway, I'm pretty surprised that it's doing as well as it is. Let's see what it looks like. I'm gonna use the old bottle trick. I'm gonna try to get some right underneath. It's a little turbulent. Oh. I think it looks like it's drawing it right up there. Now this might be a little tricky. Keep your eyes down low and see if it's going Oh, it's a lot of turbulence up top. It's hard to tell if it's, it's kind of getting drawn into the top. That's not how it's planned. Huh? I don't know. You can definitely tell that there's air being pulled from the bottom up through the top but it's really hard to see anything going down through the uh, cooling pipes. There's just too much chaos at the top here. But I mean, when I do have my hand down here when it's running, I think I can feel air coming out of these cooling type pipes down here, so it might be working. I guess we'll test it. We'll test it three ways. We'll do one like it's designed on the cooler, then we'll run the test again with just the fan on there, and then we'll just run it with like a, an A12X25 and see how it, how it pans out. Is this the best, or does this contraption actually hurt the, the cooling performance of this fan, and then we'll see you know, just how the P1 does with just an A12X25. So I'll see you after, after some testing. So how did we do? <laughs> Not the best. With the whole kit and caboodle on the air cooler, we had an average temperature of 88.6 at a room temperature of 20.5. When I took the cooling tubes off of it and just ran it as a bare fan, it actually did slightly better at 87.6 at a room temperature of 20.5. And then the A12X25 just demolished at 79.3 at a room temperature of 20.5. So yeah, it, it didn't work, but I like the idea. I like the concept behind it. I think it could be optimized by Shelby, by any of you guys watching. You can make this design function a lot better, and I just love, I just like trying stuff like this out. So if you have something crazy in, in your mind that you want to try, make sure to submit it to either the fan show at gmail.com, or if you think everybody will like it, take it over to Reddit, post it. If it gets enough traction, maybe we'll make another fan showdown special. But thank you, Shelby, for sending this over. It was fun to try, fun to print, and maybe, uh, maybe we'll see something like this in the future. Who knows? If you want to just get involved in the Fan Showdown, make sure to send your designs to fanshowdown at gmail.com. Thank you guys for watching. Till next time.